Welcome back to Out of the Fog. Well, federal candidates have just two weeks left of their campaigns. They've been working hard towards winning your vote on October 19th. Now, the riding of St. John South Mount Pearl, your candidates are Conservative Merrick Kroll. For the Green Party, Jackson McLean, the incumbent NDP's Ryan Cleary, and my first guest of the night, Liberal Seamus O'Regan. Welcome back to Out of the Fog. Good to be back. Yeah, Love so, the set. Oh, it's, yeah, we, we're enjoying it. Our, new, it. Uh, our new set, yeah. Um, so I'm just wondering, this has obviously been a very long campaign. You only have two weeks left. Uh, mm -hmm. How have you been finding it? Is that kind of a, a, you know, would you consider it, I guess, a positive or a bit of a negative when you're looking, Go, you know, you're going knocking door to door? Yeah, and, and going into it, I thought it was a negative. In actual fact, I think it's a positive because it just gives me more of an opportunity to knock on more doors and meet more people and, and to listen to what people have to say. And uh, that's actually been uh, my favorite part of the campaign so far. I, I, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy knocking on doors and talking to people at their homes, asking for their vote, uh, asking for their opinions, and boy, you know, people don't hold back, and it's great, mm -hmm. you know, and Newfoundlanders are very sophisticated, you know, they're coy, now they're not going to tell you right away, you know, whether or not you have their vote, so, you know, they look at your material and they go, well, no, think about it, you know, and it's great, people take it very seriously, but, you know, you, you tackle a lot of issues that way, and it's, it's really engaging. It's good. When you say that they don't tend to hold back, so what is it that you have been hearing? Is there any, you know, one particular issue that really kind of stands out in your mind for the people of that riding? Yeah, there's a bunch of them, but they all seem to be intertwined. I mean, I think that uh, child care is a huge issue for people, the cost of child, child care and its availability, how accessible it is, long-term care, seniors, housing, and overall, people just feel really stretched. Everyone seems to be a little strung out, whether, you know, they're paying too much for their homes, you know, they're, they're looking after uh, elderly parents, they're, they're looking after children, uh, and they seem to be stretched every which way. And, uh, and so there's an anxiety there, you know, and people just don't feel, they, they worry about the next week and the next month. When you've uh, been talking to people, do you get a sense that, A, I guess, do, are people going to vote? Because obviously that has been a big topic, especially in the, in the media over the last, you know, few elections. Uh, and do you think that they're voting necessarily for the candidate in their riding? or a party in, in, in general? I think more and more, I mean, what people say to me at the door is that they say, I'm, I'm voting for the person. I'm, you know, I may have voted for the party in the past where my parents may have encouraged me to vote for a particular party because their families always voted that way, but now I'm voting for the person. That's what I'm looking at. But they're very interested in the platforms. They're very interested in what each party stands for, where your particular party, you know, what, what do you stand for? You know, how well do you know the policies that you represent? Uh, so there's a real engagement all around, and and you know, and, and I think that we're at the stage now where uh, people are more focused. Like I think about you know two months ago when I was knocking on doors, compared to now, now people are focused, laser-like. I find you know two weeks out as to what's what's going on. People are busy, right? They've got they've got their lives. You know, they've got their children, they've got their jobs, they've got their parents, whatever they have, right? Their friends, their. They're, they're, they weren't paying attention to a federal election. Right now is when a lot of people are spending some time and, and they, and they want to take note and they want to be informed. And I really do hope people get out and vote, regardless of their political persuasion. Mm -hmm. This is a really important election. Um, and if you ask Canadians, 70 percent of them want change. And certainly I'd like to think Newfoundlanders and Labradorans were well ahead of the curve. As usual, we're leading the country. We knew that we wanted to change. We knew that Stephen Harper wasn't good for this country a long time ago. And you're really seeing it come to fruition now. So if people want change, get out and vote. Okay. I want to ask you about a, a tentative deal that was struck yesterday. This was, of course, the TPP, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, 12 countries, Canada included. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's kind of considered as, a, I guess, a building block for future uh, trade deals. But I'm just wondering, you know, there's a lot of mixed reviews, even among the party, uh, federal party leaders, uh, about this deal. What are your thoughts on it? And I guess specifically to Newfoundland and Labrador, especially when you look at, you know, the fisheries. Well, look, we're a trading nation, and we're a trading province, and we were a trading country before we joined. Canada. Um, so, you know, we're, we are fervently pro-trade. Uh, having said that, the devil's in the details. Um, and when you look at areas like the auto sector and, uh, you know, what, what's called supply side, you know, management when it comes to dairy products and that sort of thing, um, we've always felt that that provides a certain amount of stability when it comes to farmers and pricing and those sorts of things. So, you know, what, what Justin Trudeau has said, and I think it's very prudent, is uh, we lean towards pro-trade but we need to see the details. And we also believe that we should have an open for, you know, for once, please, because we haven't had it in a long time, particularly since Stephen Harper's been in there, an open and transparent debate about this, please, in Parliament, mm -hmm. amongst members of Parliament, about, about 
you know, the upsides and the downsides. You've talked about a number of industries, but when you look specific to Newfoundland and Labrador, and, and even with the fisheries, uh, are, are, do you have any thoughts specifically on that, though? Usually the more open, the better. I mean, you know, we're very good at what we do, and if there's opportunity in trade, let's grab it. But, you know, again, the devil's in the details, Aaron, so, we, you know, let's look at this, you know, scrupulously. And, uh, and when we debate in a parliament, I would expect that the, you know, members of parliament for Newfoundland and Labrador, whomever they may be, will, will look at it with a keen eye. I want to uh, know your thoughts. Uh, you know, you've been criticized for not living here uh, for the last number of years. Uh, what are your thoughts on that when, when you hear that, when that comes up? I think it's hogwash, to be uh, honest with you. Um, uh, first of all, because there are so many Newfoundlanders and Labradorians who, ha you know, because of opportunity or because they have to, they have to go away to work. Um, I had a great opportunity with Canada Am. And uh, as w one of your staff here on the show reminded me, uh, not that I needed reminding, but you know, every morning I represented this province uh, on a national stage. I took advantage of that opportunity. Um, so, and I'm, I benefit from the experience of having been away. We, you know, I moved my family back here a year ago. Uh, this is where we live. Um, this is where, in my mind, I've always lived. I just kind of went away to work in Toronto. And, uh, and I benefited enormously from that, as do many Newfoundlanders and Labradorians who go away to work and are lucky enough to come back when, when they have an opportunity. Uh, you've done many interviews, obviously, uh, over you know the last uh, 10 weeks or so. I do want to bring up one that uh, was done uh, with NTV and, and talking about preparedness because it took place in June and you were talking about a piece of legislation, uh, I guess, that you were essentially campaigning over. Uh, but it looked as though you weren't prepared, and that was kind of the headline uh, that was picked up. I'm just wondering, you know, your thoughts on that now as you're going in two weeks and doing people vote. Do you feel as though Aaron, you're I, prepared? I would say this. Uh, I've learned many things having been on this side of the mic as opposed to being on that side of the mic. And uh, it wasn't a matter of preparedness so much as I just wanted to make sure that I had every bit of you know information in front of me, and um, you know that part went to air. You know these are these were dealing with two labor uh, pieces of legislation, bills three seven seven, bill five two five, dealing with dealing with unions, and that's what I was discussing on that day. And uh, you know what can I say? Um, you know if I could take it back, yes I would. But you know I, there's one thing that I certainly don't regret, and that is. When I give specific answers to journalists or to whomever, having been on that side of the fence, I want to make sure that I have as much information as I possibly can in front of me so that I can give as accurate a response as I can. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you were elected in two weeks' time, what exactly would be your first priority moving forward? Uh, my first priority would be representing the people of St. John, South Mount Pearl. And that sounds like a general answer, but boy, I tell you what, after you've gone door to door and knocked on doors for as many months as I have. There's nothing that um, there, there, you realize very clearly that in order to, to succeed in this position, you have to be their voice in Ottawa and not Ottawa, Ottawa's voice back to them. So, you know, I, I, you know my first priority is, is obviously to represent them. Um, and also, you know, when, when they're electing me, they're electing a, a liberal platform and a series of liberal policies that we've put forward and we feel very strongly about. So it would be helping, it, it would be helping a liberal government enact those. Okay, we just have 30 seconds left, but uh, okay. if you just tell our viewers, you know, why should they vote for Seamus O'Regan? Well, to be honest, uh, I believe so strongly in this province. I believe so strongly in this city, in the city of Mount Pearl, uh, the city of St. John's, in Petty Harbor, in Windless Bay. Bay Bulls, um, and, and I want to represent them to the best of my ability, and I believe I bring some, some key components to the table. I have a, a long history in, in the provincial government, working in the Premier's office and working for the Minister of Justice. Uh, I've got an academic political career as well, um, and you know I take those things very seriously. And I've gotten to know this province so well and traveled through so much of it uh, during my time at Canada AM that I believe I would be a good representative for the people of St. John South Mount Pearl. Okay, well, Seamus, we're going to, have to leave it there, but I want to thank you very much uh, for joining us here this evening. Thanks, Aaron. Okay, we are going to take a very short break, but uh, stay with us. There's lots more to come here tonight on Out of the Fog.